In Old School RuneScape, a very popular method of training the fire-making skill is the Wintertot minigame. Uh, boss? That's right, Wintertot was the first skilling boss introduced to OSRS, giving players an engaging way of skilling and earning great rewards. In the minigame style boss, players assist a group of Arceus mages who possess unique magical abilities that allow them to subdue the terrifying Wintertot. Help them fuel the fires and defeat this skilling boss for massive amounts of experience, resources, and a chance at that sweet phoenix pet. While subduing the winter tot is one of the most efficient and easiest ways to train the fire making skill, the requirements are fairly low. The only hard requirements are that you must be playing on a member's account and you must have level 50 fire making. This skill level can be achieved in a very short period of time, even on an Iron Man account which makes it a great way to build up a cache of resources for an Iron Man journey. However, it's also a great way to train your fire making to level 99, especially if you like the Phoenix pet, or simply want to avoid giving yourself early onset arthritis. However, to pick Bruma herbs which are needed to heal the pyromancers, you must have completed the druidic ritual quest, and to fix broken braziers for construction experience, you must own a player-owned house. These activities, however, are optional. Getting to Wintertot is pretty simple, but it may not be so straightforward if you don't have access to fairy rings or the ability to trade with other players. Let's start with the easiest method, the games necklace. If you have a charged games necklace, or better yet, a jewelry box in your player-owned house, you can teleport directly to the Wintertot camp. All that's in your way at this point are the mighty doors of Din. Luckily, getting past them is as simple as a left click, assuming you meet the fire making skill requirement. If you've completed the quest Fairy Tale Part 2 to the point at which you unlock fairy rings, you can simply input the code CIS and this will teleport you just south of the Wintertot camp in Archaeus House. Keep in mind that you'll have to pay the NPC Trosa a one time fee of 80,000 coins to unlock this destination. Once there, follow this path to the north to enter the camp. Assuming you're an Iron Man which hasn't unlocked either of the above methods, you can take the long way. This involves taking a ship from Port Sarim to Port Piscarilius, running west to the castle of Great Corand, then running north and past the Fairy Ring CIS. It's highly recommended that you unlock one of the better methods of getting there if you plan to train here a lot. In addition to being in the right place within Gilanor, you'll also want to be on the correct server. This guide is focused on mass winter tot, as it's the most efficient way to subdue the boss in terms of experience. There are three worlds dedicated to fighting the Winter Tot. They are World 307 for the United States, World 309 for the United Kingdom, and World 311 for Germany. It doesn't matter all that much which one of these you're in, although you should aim for the one closest to you. Also, World 307 is typically the most popular of the three, so you may be able to complete more runs per hour in this world. Now, the Winter Top may look like a minigame, but it's actually a boss fight. You take damage throughout the duration of the fight, and the amount of damage is very large without the type of equipment referred to as warm clothing. You need four pieces of warm gear to maintain the maximum damage reduction effect, and there are many different items which count as warm clothing. However, there are two sets that you should aim for. Obviously, the Pyromancer outfit is warm, and it's obtained through the Winter Tot supply crates. However, if you haven't started fighting it yet, you should probably obtain the Clue Hunter outfit. The Clue Hunter outfit includes six pieces, but the Helm of Raidwald does not count as warm clothing. As such, it's recommended to get at least four pieces of the outfit if you have nothing else to protect from the cold. The Old School RuneScape Wiki has a great short guide on obtaining each piece, and it'll only take a few minutes to get them all. Uh, the wiki also has a list of all the pieces of gear you can use to protect from the chill of Winter Tot. I'll leave links to both of these articles on the wiki down below in the description, so be sure to check that out. There are a few other basic items you'll need to effectively subdue the boss, including a hammer, a tinderbox, a knife, and an axe that you can use, as well as food. The food you'll want to use will vary based on your resources, HP, and fire making levels, and we'll discuss more on that later. Now you know how to get to the boss and what you need to bring in, it's time to talk about how to fight the boss. The first thing you're going to want to do is light the brazier as soon as the boss fight begins. Simply click on the brazier to do this. 
Then, run into the corner next to the Bruma Roots and use your special attack if you have a Dragon or Crystal Axe equipped. Then, you can begin chopping Bruma Roots. Chopping the Bruma Roots is very simple, you just have to left click them. You'll want to be standing in this specific tile so that you cannot be hit by the Ice Storms. Once your inventory is full of roots, it's time for your first decision. If you've spent any time at all in the Winter Tot, you'll have heard somebody say, Why Fletch? It sounds really dumb, but there are two schools of thought when it comes to the activity. In one, experience points per hour is the only metric of concern, and other rewards of the activity are purely secondary to that. Nothing wrong with that. The best fire making experience per hour at the Winter Tot is achieved by not fletching the Bruma Roots. However, if you do fletch them, you'll receive 25 points per root instead of 10. This makes a huge difference in your likelihood of receiving the much coveted Phoenix Pet, and it makes your rewards a little bit better overall. It's totally up to you which way you go about this. Personally, I fletch about one inventory of logs into Kindling first, then continue to feed plain Bruma Roots to the Brazier thereafter. I've had way too many games that I lost out on a crate because I didn't fletch and I was AFKing too hard. Regardless, once you have the roots or kindling you want to feed to the braziers, simply walk up to them and stand on this particular tile. Like with the chopping tile, this one and the corresponding ones at the other braziers is much less likely to be hit by ice storms. This, of course, is an exception to the ones that break the brazier, which we'll discuss in a moment. Once you're in this spot, however, simply left click on the brazier to burn the kindling or roots and damage the boss. Occasionally, the pyromancers will be hit with ice storms, and eventually they'll lose all their HP. They'll be stunned, and in order to light the brazier they correspond to, somebody will have to feed them a rejuvenation potion. The rejuvenation potion can be made by collecting the unfinished potion in the starting room and combining it with a bruma herb picked from the center of either lane in the room. Most players choose to simply ignore this as somebody else is likely to get to it before you anyways, However, if you do heal a Pyromancer, you'll get 30 points toward the next reward crate and a small bit of herb lore experience. Sometimes an ice storm will appear above the brazier. Smaller ones will just put the fire out, requiring somebody to relight it. The larger ones, however, will break the brazier and damage nearby players. It's recommended to step away, but shortly after this happens, you'll want to left click the brazier to fix it. This will grant 25 points and a small bit of the widely coveted construction experience. As discussed before, the Winter Tot will do more damage depending on your hit points level. For this reason, a common path on Iron Man accounts is to complete the grind to 99 fire making here before gaining their first few HP levels. This allows them to use accessible foods like wines and cakes. However, many of us already had levels in the skill before the boss was even released, so for higher HP players, it's recommended to use food that heals more HP, such as Ceridomen Brews. The damage dealt to players at the Winter Tot varies based on the player's fire making levels as well, with higher leveled players taking less damage. The scaling's a bit complicated, but I've linked a calculator below that can help you figure out how much damage you'll be taking. On the dedicated worlds, Winter Tot kills are typically around 5 to 6 minutes each, meaning that you could reasonably expect to subdue the boss between 10 and 12 times per hour. There are a couple of plugins on the Runelight client that can help you defeat the Winter Tot, namely the Entity Hider and Status Bar plugins. Entity Hider allows you to hide other players, their pets, and more. This can take away the hustle and bustle of mass worlds and even help you ignore the players typing Y Fletch. The Status Bars plugin makes it easier to tell when you've been damaged by the Winter Tot, especially if you have game sounds off. I personally leave this plugin on all the time as I find it super helpful in bossing or combat related activities as well. The experience rates you'll be able to earn at Winter Tot scale with the various skills used in the activity. Namely, fire making, wood cutting, and fletching. Fire making is the main skill that players come here to train, so we'll focus on that. According to the wiki, feeding Bruma roots only, you can expect anywhere from 161,000 to 320,000 fire making experience per hour, depending on your fire making level. If you are using kindling, however, 
that decreases to between 135,000 and 270,000 experience per hour. Now, the moment some of you have been patiently waiting for. What are the rewards? Well, after each completion of Winter Tot, you'll receive a supply crate. This requires that you earn at least 500 points. For 500 points, the crate will contain two rolls on the drop table, which contains logs, gems, ores, herbs, seeds, fish, and of course, the unique items. The average level of resources awarded per roll is based on the player's skill levels at the time that they open the crates. The seed quality is based on farming level and the ores on mining level, and so on. Extra points earned throughout the fight will give the crates more rolls on the drop table, one for every 500 extra points. Note, you will have a chance at an additional roll for partial sets of 500 points. For example, if you earn 750 points, you'll have two rolls and a 50% chance of a third. It's possible to fight the boss in a solo encounter or in a small team and earn many points, but the reward crate can only contain 28 rolls, so that means 13,500 points is the maximum useful amount to earn in a single kill. Well, that pretty much concludes my Winter Tot guide for Old School RuneScape. Please let me know in the comments below if there's anything else you'd like me to cover, and I'll be seeing you in the next video.